Hey everyone, it's Federico here and today we are putting the spotlight on Timo and it was about time. So Timo is a Max user since a lot of years and he is very active in the Max community. You can find him on the Discord server of Max, you can find him on the Max forum, you can find him in several places. And during the years Timo uh, created a lot of Max packages which we can find in his GitHub. So if we go in github.com tmhgland we will find his GitHub which contains a lot of repositories as you can see 73 and most of them are Max packages. So Today, I want to focus on its latest release, which is called IV Toolbox. And what is this package about? So if we go in the About section, we can read it. But to make it even more concise, this is a package that contains some abstractions that uh, are very useful to work with real-time audiovisual. Let's go straight into it and see how, can, how we can install it. So there is, a, uh, at the end of the readme, there is an install uh, section where we can see how to install. We can either download the zip and unzip it inside packages or we can open the terminal and clone the repository in our packages folder. So my preferred method is to actually clone this folder, uh, which is kind of faster. So once you're in the terminal, we can go in our packages folder, which on Mac will be located into home, documents, max8, and then packages. Now we are into packages, and then we can do the. We can copy this line from uh, the GitHub of Timo. Git clone blah blah blah. Just pass this here. Press enter, and I have it already. But for you, it will uh, clone it if you don't have it yet. Great. So now that we have cloned the repository into our packages folder, uh, we can go into package manager here in a new patch, for example. Then go into installed packages here, so not remote but installed, and that will be the AB toolbox by Timo. Great. Then we go into launch, and this will launch uh, this patch, which uh, contains all the objects that Timo added to this package. And uh, these are awesome. Let's actually click here into full example. And this contains example for each one of those objects, which is uh, in itself already crazy. And so let's see what those abstractions do, what those objects do. Let's click, let's click here on enable. Now we need some audio, so I will just click here on this uh, toggle, which is marked with number three. Some music starts playing and you can see that some visual starts to appear. Now, if we follow all the numbers here, you can see that the um, objects from the package are marked in blue, which is very useful. So there is a bunch of them. I will not describe them all because you can do this on your own. There is Everything is very good documented and every object has its own help file, which is uh, extremely useful. What I will do is highlight my favorite ones. For example, AV follow. This is insanely, insanely useful. So this object has three inputs as an attack, a release, and another slider and in Timo's words this third slider is the slow release which basically filters out low frequency changes so you get uh, clearer readings of the transients and you don't need to adjust threshold so often so basically what I can see is that when we make these um, to zero milliseconds the signal gets much more uh, with high frequency changes while if we make these higher this will remove them. So yeah, this kind of smooths out the signal. And also we have an attribute which is the cutoff. So we can choose a specific frequency to amplitude follow uh, through the cutoffs attribute. You can see if we double click on the object and we open it, we can see that there is this uh, cutoffs attribute here. There is also a version of this object which has three bands. So as envelope following on three different frequency bands, it's called AV follow three. So you can separate the signal into three frequency bands, uh, setting the low, the high, and what is in between them. And then you can envelope followers those three bands separately uh, using the same object, which is super cool. So we could track, for example, the kick in a track and the middle portion of the spectrum just using this one object. Uh, so this is another one of my favorites. Then what else I like very much? Abby screenshot. <laughs> this is so cool. It's something that is so useful and somehow I never thought myself about doing something like that. It allows you to just take a screenshot of whatever uh, you send inside it. So there we go in uh, super high res. The resolution I think is the same as, as the input texture. So this should be full HD and indeed it is. That's another super cool object. Then we got the cross tree object. Uh, let's check it out. 
Two crossover filters that together output a low, mid, and high band of the frequency spectrum. It's basically, I think it's a bunch, uh, it's a couple of cross filters, uh, one after the other. Again, this package just makes these little things, these super annoying little things that you have to code, um, that you have to rewrite all, uh, all the times and you're too lazy probably to make a snapshot. Well, this package takes care of all these little annoying things for us. So, so much appreciated. AV catch, uh, it's another great one. It's like the catch object, but basically has some parameters set up for us. It's like a wrapper around the um, catch object. Just a very nice snippet to have ready to use instead of uh, thinking yourself about what parameters you have to put on the catch object. And if you want, you can still uh, just uh, access it and modify the parameters yourself. That's another great one. Then there is all the stuff about time. So personally, I never really use all the time related objects in Max, like transport and uh, other things. But if you're doing audio visual, making the sound in uh, max as well this is definitely super useful so for example there is here the time trigger which outputs a bang at the defined interval in minus uh, seconds and milliseconds also great and this one also is related i think to the when object report to the current time in uh, minu minutes seconds and milliseconds since the transport was started super useful and then we also have a neat um, clock display here if you sometimes don't remember how to make a clock display here you have it just ready made for us. This is already a little uh, nice snippet on itself, so we could just save it. Another great one is the spectrum. Uh, this is so cool. It gives us the spectrum of the incoming signal. And we can again set an attack and release to kind of smooth the signal or make it less smooth. This is something that I uh, find myself using all the time. Okay, let's check the um, launcher patch. And see what else we are missing uh, spectrogram oh this is also very great this is basically the spectrogram so it's like the spectrum but uh, the is the spectrum over time awesome mid side yeah this is something that i, I never really did uh, need but is uh, great if you want to have some uh, uh, the mid side algorithms so just get the mid side from uh, a stereo signal a trigger that's one that's another one that i wanted to mention these uh, uh, triggers a bang when the audio passes a certain threshold that we can decide using these down and up inputs. So this uses the AV follow and it's just so useful because usually what they did is like just making the a little greater than to, to send a bang when uh, there was a threshold to be checked. But this object makes it in a much more neat way. And also we can set the cutoffs and the run times for the AV follow object as attributes or just messages for this object. So. That's another great one. Another one, which I was almost forgetting, is the IV camera control, which basically creates a camera in your scene that you can control with the WIST keys, like with the Gitanim drive when we use the UI. But the cool thing about that is that it also allows you to look around in the scene, not using the mouse, but using the JK l and i keys so basically you can go around in a scene without ever seeing your mouse uh, which is something that is actually I never really thought about it but it's super nice to have and then apart from all these great uh, abstractions here we get also extensions so these are like aliases that we can use to um, create the standard jitter objects but with a bunch of presets uh, with a bunch of attributes already set so for example if you go with av movie it will create this jit movie object with a bunch of attributes already set av enable is also a great one it allows us to bypass texture input and disable it as well um, which is something that uh, if you're like me you probably did it thousands of times and um, you always had to create your little bunch of objects to achieve that but now you have a single object that does that so another great uh, utility and possibly my favorite one is the param generator so let's check the help file uh, the help file says to copy all this stuff into a new patcher so that's what I'm going to do and then with the patch unlocked I clicked um, option plus shift plus click on the slab object and we create parameters for the shader and this is so cool so you don't have to click on the shader open it and check which parameters it actually has uh, this object will display them automatically for us this is probably the coolest thing about this package for me personally i love it and another great thing, which I don't, I don't remember if it's mentioned here, but if we go on the GitHub, there are like shaders mappings. What does it mean? So let's say I want to create a, a GGL slab, but I don't remember exactly what's the name of the shader I want to use. Now, if I add this package, I can click GGL slab dot 
and then it will uh, show me all the possible shaders that are available and this is so cool so the possibility of having a list of shader just by uh creating a ggl.slab dot object here and see all the shaders available this is extremely extremely useful i think it works also with pics oh oh this is so cool and what else have we got Slab. Oh, GGL shader as well. So if I go with GGL shader dot something, I will have uh, uh, shaders for the GGL shader file. So I can attach those shaders to some shapes or something. Um, I think this was all. I mean, there is a lot more stuff, like some more jitter mappings that I didn't show. And there are a lot more of objects that I didn't talk about, but I will let you explore the package yourself. If something is not working, I'm sure Timo will appreciate if you will uh, leave an issue on his uh, GitHub and probably not write him personally. That's uh, something that I know for experience I would prefer. I'm very happy to be able to give to this package a bit of exposure. I don't know how much weight I can put into this, but whatever, uh, whatever helps, I'm happy to contribute. So, super cool. Thank you so much, Timo, for taking the time and creating this and sharing it freely with the community. Oh, um, if you want to support Timo for his work, you can buy his patches on uh, Gumroad. There's a lot of cool stuff. Or you can support him on Patreon at Timo Ogland. Speaking of Patreon, uh, if you would like to support my channel as well and get access to tons of patches uh, for Jitter and visuals, you can support me on Patreon as well. And let me remind you as always that on my website you can find all my video tutorials and all the shared patches that I have, plus a bunch of other stuff like the Knowledge Pot, which is a place where I store some useful um, sources of information about computer graphics and Jitter and Max in general. Cool. Go grab the audio video toolbox package and have fun with it. Thank you so much for following. Thank you to Timo too for creating this package again. And I will see you soon in the next video. Ciao.